Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Easter. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Hyde Park. Uh, We welcome those who may be streaming uh, on YouTube, if you are. As always, take a moment to greet one another using the chat function. Special welcome to those that may be visiting uh, us for the first time today. If you are and have not visited uh, our welcome table, please do so on the way out. Uh, We have some welcome bags with uh, all kinds of goodies and and information about uh, the happenings at the church. Also, uh, you're welcome to visit us uh, for coffee hour after the service. Just follow the stampede out the door, out to the left. I have a few few announcements. Um, We ask that you please complete the connection card and the handout. Uh, with as much information as possible. Um, We are planning a new uh, pictorial directory and we would like to use as much information, current information as possible. The ushers will collect that card during the first hymn. I do want to point out the the women's retreat and the taste and talent uh, in the in the handout. if, if you uh, would like to have more information on that, please check uh, the appropriate box on the, on the connection card. <coughs> Lastly, uh, if you did uh, purchase uh, Easter flowers, uh, we ask that you take those after the 1030 service. Um, they are marked with family names on them, uh, so please keep a lookout for that. With that, let's turn to the gathering thoughts for today from John chapter 20, verse 18a. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Please meditate on that. Stand and join me in the gathering thoughts. 
O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. And as we do rejoice, we sing together.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are the Lord God, and you have made your light to shine upon us. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. Amen. This morning, the first reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, 34 through 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God. Amen. This time I'd like to invite the children to come forward.
Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good? Everyone's doing well? Anything special going on? Yellow. It's even a it's even a special kind of yellow. Gold. It's gold. It is gold okay? Yeah? Okay. Thanks. All right. So this this gold reminds me of a very special place where the streets are paved of gold. The yellow brick road. <laughs> I said it's gold and not yellow, right? <laughs> well, the yellow brick road is a very special place, okay? And there's kind of a very special person back there in the castle, but I'm talking about a different place called heaven, okay? Oh, yes, the jaws drop. Oh, yeah, right? And heaven is a place where God wants all of us to be, all right? We celebrate today that Jesus rose from the dead, and we know that eventually Jesus is going to heaven and that he's preparing a place for us. But watch this. You know what happens if I turn this inside out? It's a no, it's not a finger puppet, but what happens? Now what color do I have? Black. Black, Black symbolizes some of the wrong things we do or the good things that we leave undone. The fancy word we have for that is sin. When we have separation from God, that's what the black resembles, and that gets in the way of us going to heaven. How many of you think we're going to end with bad news? No. I've got something else. Red, that's right. I didn't even have to ask you what color, did I? That's right, red. And red reminds us of the blood of Jesus, that Jesus died for us, that in, in exchange for our sin, God didn't leave us with bad news, but Jesus died for us so that our sin would be forgiven. And you know what happens when our sin is forgiven? <laughs> Isn't that great? So, so here's what happens. When our sin is cleansed by Jesus' blood, it makes us whole and pure and clean just like this. Isn't that good news? I told you we wouldn't end with bad news, right? And you know what? How's that? Is that fun? It's what? It's so, many it's so many colors, isn't it? It's so many colors. And once we're cleansed by Jesus' blood and made white as snow and pure, then we can grow in our faith. We go to Sunday school. We read the Bible. We sing hymns and songs. And we grow in our love for Jesus. And we come to understand Jesus' love for us. And then you know what? See what I have? I have something special inside, which is a bracelet that says, Ambassadors for Christ. Because when we are growing in our faith, then we can share our love for Jesus with others. And we can tell others that Jesus loves them. So, I think I have. One for each of you. You're welcome. 
year welcome. And when you all leave later this morning, <laughs> there's one of these for each of you on the way out. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and that through our faith in him we are made whole and clean and have the opportunity to grow deeper in faith and to share your love with others. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. At this time, I invite the choir to share the anthem with us. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Easter Gospel. The Gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb, so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter 
and reached the tomb first, and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as they yet did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead, then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw the two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but She did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Lord God, as we take a few moments to meditate upon the truth of your word, grant us hearts and minds that are open to receiving all that you would speak to us and hands and feet that are willing to go forth and serve as you would lead us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The key thought I want to share with you on this Easter morning is this. Those who observe an empty tomb will receive encouragement when we continue seeking long enough and eventually hear the voice of Jesus. That's where the encouragement comes from. If we will seek out Christ and wait to hear the voice of Jesus. The morning began with shock and grief, but an awareness of the living Christ in the garden brought hope and joy. So let's review the events of the morning and what happened as different people came and went from the tomb. Mary saw the stone rolled away. I find it interesting. She just assumed an empty tomb. At this point, she didn't look inside. She just saw that the stone had been rolled away and assumed that the tomb was empty. So she decided to go for the disciples. She went to Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. We frequently know that as the disciple John. After she went to Peter and the other disciple, Peter came and and John came with him, and, and Peter was the second one to arrive, but he was the first one to actually enter the tomb. He witnessed the empty tomb and the grave clothes lying there. The other disciple, John, had arrived and peeked in at first, but allowed... Peter to go in. and When John went in, he saw and believed, knowing that something significant had happened. The men left, but Mary lingered. Mary stayed around. Mary then went into the tomb and saw the angels. They asked her the question, why are you weeping? Interesting that Mary was asked that question twice. When she later turned around and saw Jesus not knowing it was Jesus, he asked her the same question, woman, why are you weeping? She didn't recognize Jesus. We wonder, why didn't Mary recognize Jesus? What could be getting in the way of Mary's recognizing Jesus at this point? But 
Maybe it's because he didn't look like the last time she saw him. Last time she saw Jesus, he was bloodied and scarred and hanging on a cross, but now he had been cleaned up. He was standing in front of her. Maybe it's because it was early in the morning. One of my favorite phrases in scripture, while it was still dark. You see, darkness doesn't keep the Lord from working. So early in the morning, while it was still dark, Mary arrived at the tomb. John and Peter arrived at the tomb, and something miraculous was going to be witnessed. Something that had happened was now going to be given testimony to Why didn't Mary recognize Jesus? Perhaps like us, when we are struggling and searching, Jesus may not appear as we expect him to, or the darkness may obscure our view. We need to be in a position to hear his voice, to receive the assurance of his presence. I find it interesting that when Jesus first spoke to Mary, when he asked her the question, why are you weeping? Still, she heard his voice, but she hadn't made the connection yet until he spoke her name, Mary. And at that point, the lights came on. At that point, the awareness grew. I know who this is. Rabboni, teacher, Jesus, the good shepherd. How does the good shepherd, how do the sheep know their shepherd? When he calls their name. Woman, why are you weeping? Didn't turn the lights on for Mary at that time. But when he spoke her name, Mary, it all made sense. It is the voice of Jesus when we hear the voice of Jesus that we are prepared to be ambassadors. And although we are prepared to be ambassadors, there are a couple of questions that, uh, that remain for me. Why do we assume the worst? Mary looked at the tomb where the stone rolled away and just assumed the body was gone. She hadn't even looked in yet. And how many of us, if we're truly confessional, We'll admit when situations are not going the way we planned them, the way we expected that we, like Mary, might assume the worst. The open tomb troubled all who saw the stone rolled away. Nobody, for instance, assumed resurrection at that point. John saw and believed after peering in, but both disciples left without saying a word. Even after seeing the angel, Mary wasn't convinced, but after hearing Jesus' voice, She went to tell the good news. The other question that remains for me is, are we easily deterred from seeking Jesus? Do we, like the disciples, sometimes observe an empty tomb, having gone inside, proving to ourselves that it is empty, and go away and and say nothing and figure, well, I missed the opportunity. Jesus is, is gone. The disciples left after a physical examination of his absence, but Mary kept the search alive until she met the risen Savior. The good good news for those who merely observe an empty tomb is that Jesus will be persistent in revealing himself until they see and believe. This was not the only opportunity to give testimony to resurrection. When we continue reading through John's gospel, we see that Jesus appeared to the disciples. Yes, Peter and John left without having seen Jesus, but he would appear to them. And when Thomas wasn't with them, he would appear again. And then on the lake shore, and time after time, Jesus would appear and show that he was alive and that the good news would be shared. The ultimate message is about being ambassadors of the resurrection. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples these wonderful words, I have seen the Lord. What better words for an Easter Sunday than to say, I have seen the Lord. Mary spoke those words. 
because those who observe an empty tomb will receive encouragement when we continue seeking long enough and eventually hear the voice of Jesus. Remember, the morning began with shock and grief, but an awareness of the living Christ in the garden brought hope and joy. When we hear the voice of Jesus, we have the opportunity to share his word with others. We might ask, who am I to share the good news? I'm just a nobody. Compared to the great apostles of faith, who am I to share the good news? Sure, it was easy for Peter. We know Peter. We know John. They, we, we read what they wrote. We read about the events of their lives in Scripture. But, but who am I? I'm just a, just a, a nobody. But I'm here to proclaim that's who Jesus uses, amen? I mean, who was Peter really? You heard a little bit earlier the, the scripture where Peter testified to his faith. Who was Peter? Remember, Peter is the one who denied knowing Jesus. Peter is the one who foolishly said at the transfiguration, let's build houses and keep this going on forever. Peter is the one who got angry and cut off the servant's ear in the garden. Peter is the one who, when Jesus said, my time is coming and I'm going to be taken from this earth, Peter said, no way, that's not going to happen. And yet, here's Peter. Having, in our minds, maybe totally disqualified himself from giving any testimony to the resurrection, and this is who Jesus chooses to use. And that other scripture you heard Don read a little while ago, that scripture about Paul, right? We put Paul up on a pedestal. Of course Paul is going to testify to who Christ is. But until that experience he had on the Damascus Road, he was the one who was not only speaking against, but acting against Christians, destroying and taking them back and arresting them. Paul wanted nothing to do with the Christian faith until Jesus appeared to him, and that was the only qualification that was needed, that Jesus appeared to him. Peter was a nobody. Paul was a nobody. John had no reason, no qualifications to testify. And Mary, who would listen to her? But she said, I have seen the Lord. The only qualification needed to give testimony to Christ, his resurrection, and new life, is that we have seen the Lord. I love the words of the song by Casting Crowns that says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So are we insignificant? Are we nobodies? Maybe in the eyes of the world, but not in the heart of Christ. Because when we have witnessed, that's all we're asked to share is our personal experience. I have seen the Lord. That portion of your life where you saw the Lord may be different than the portion of someone else's life when they saw the Lord. But it's a real experience. And it's worth sharing. Some of us may still be at that place by the tomb very early in the morning while it's still dark waiting for Christ to speak our name. But once he has... Once we've experienced his presence in our lives, we are more than qualified to share, to testify. I know the love of Christ in my life. I pray you also will know the love of Christ in your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. And with that, let us stand and sing together.
to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with a few moments of silence for our personal prayers of confession before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As those who are forgiven and reconciled before God and one another, I invite you to turn and greet one another with the peace of Christ. And as we remain standing, we continue singing together the day of resurrection.
I invite you to remain standing for the beginning of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to be seated as we continue in the attitude of prayer. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. All things are ready. The United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion table. Everyone is welcome at the table which Christ himself has prepared. I invite you to come forward at the direction of the usher to receive a piece of bread and then a little cup of juice. And then moving to the side, there's a basket for your empty juice cups as you return to your seats using the opposite aisle. If anyone is not comfortable coming forward, I am happy to come bring communion to you uh, once we've served everyone else. Just let the usher know and we'll be happy to come your way. Please come and receive the Lord's Supper.
Let us pray. Lord God, we are grateful for this meal. As you served your disciples and extended your love to them, so we are recipients of your love, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing together number 308, Thine be the glory. All right, let's practice after me. I have seen the Lord. 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 Once you've seen him, that's all you need to do. Share the joy, share the peace, share the grace you've received. Go in God's peace and love and joy. Amen. <laughs>